Hello and welcome back to the shop. My name is Brian and today we're going to be building this hand tool cabinet. Here I'm bringing the lumber for the cabinet to its final dimension. We make one pass over the jointer and then we're going to run it through the planer to bring it to its final thickness. Once the lumber is dimensioned, we take it to the table saw and cut the carcass parts to their final size. Now I have to put a dado or groove in the carcass sides and the top and bottom. And what I need to do is put a groove but leave enough depth for the French cleat that's going to hang by. So I'm going to take a piece of wood that's three quarters of an inch to give me my space and then cut the groove from there. We're going to run a through groove for the sides and on the top and the bottom we're going to do a stop groove. Now I'm going to take the top and bottoms to the bench and I'm going to finish up the stopped groove with some chisels and a router point. Now this butternut's very easy to work. It also helps to have very sharp tools but this is a very, very, very hand tool friendly wood. Now we're gonna clean up some of what I've chopped. Basically gonna have the bevel down on the chisel. And once I clear out what I feel is enough, I will take the router plane and finish off the bottom. Here we're going to start doing the joinery to hold the case together and we're going to be using dowel construction and we're going to be using the dowel max for that construction. Here we're putting the dowels in the ends and then I'll have to reconfigure the jig to come back to do the faces. As you can see, this, this down max jig is very, very easy to use and it is very, very accurate. Mm -hmm. 
Here I'm starting the construction on the interior portion of the tool cabinet. And I ran some grooves in the sides of the carcass to hold the shelving. And I'm using the Miller dowel system for the divider partitions. This is basically a step drill bit and a stepped peg, looks like a wooden nail basically. And you just drill the holes, add some glue to the pegs. And here I'm showing you the step drill bit. And this is what the, the peg looks like. And they come in a variety of different wood species. I believe these are the walnut ones. Um, just add some glue to them and hammer them home just like a nail. And then use a flush cut saw and cut off with the uh, piece sticking at the end and sand it flush. And here's a quick look of what we have after we're finished. Very, very simple joinery. Very easy to do. That's the whole point of this whole project was to make it quick and easy. So most of the carcass construction done, I moved my attention to the panels. This is the back panel and I am adding some contact cement. Now the brush I'm using is for contact cement, it's not a regular paint roller. Once I have the contact cement on both sides, I'll let it sit up until it just starts to tack. Here I am rolling it out. I will carefully lay it down by hand and then come back with a J roller to press it on. And from that point, I'll trim up the, uh, the panel to where I need it, the size I need it to be. These are the door panels. Now the back panel I did in the white ash. The door panel, the interior panel part is white ash and the outside you see here, I'm laying uh, down the rosewood veneer. Once the panels are done, here I am slipping the back panel into the carcass and we'll get the carcass constructed and glued up. Now the shelf and the drawer section, I glued up separately uh, as a separate sub-assembly to make the final glue up a little easier. So all I had to worry about was connecting the back panel and, and the sides. So after we're glued up, here we are putting on a few coats of finish. We decided to go with the uh, the armor seal for this cabinet. So here's the final construction of the door panels. Same as the basically as the carcass. We dialed everything, grooved it, and here we are doing the final glue up. And after the glue dried, we pulled them out of clamps, and here we are putting on the armor seal. I could not believe how this veneer sucked up the armor seal. That's a thirsty veneer. After the finish was dried, it was time to install the piano hinges. If anyone's ever done these, you know it's just a uh, very simple to do. It's just a lot of screws. So once we get them hooked up to the carcass, I will then turn it on my table, and then I will use some wood to raise up the door, use a clamp to hold it together, and then attach the door.
not a checked fit. And the fact that we had a square carcass and nice square doors, this thing just dropped right together. No wishes at all. Okay, so now we're going to start the interior. This is the plain till and this basically a piece of plywood that I've veneered with the ash and we're using some of the butternut uh, to divide the planes. And I didn't glue these sections down in case I want to rearrange them differently in the future. So I just laid the plane, put a piece of wood as a divider and used the pin nail to put it down. And we're going to attach it to the cabinet itself now. now the two larger planes wouldn't fit in a till so I just designed it so that they had like a turn peg to hold them up on the, uh, the wall of the cabinet. So here we are assembling the drawers, uh, same construction as the rest of the, uh, the cabinet, I'm using a dowel max to dowel everything together and grooves to hold the plywood bottom in. We used pine for the, uh, the back and the sides and I had a piece of maple that I used for the fronts. And no pulls, we just used a force and a bit to cut a, a half a hole out, you know, for a finger, basic finger relief. So after sanding the drawer and getting everything to fit nice, I took the block plane and I'm chamfering all the edges that you're going to touch, just so you don't feel the sharpness of the corners. And here I'm installing the plywood bottom, piece of quarter inch plywood with a screw to hold it in place. And we have a nice fit. So now we'll start hanging some of the tools on the interior. Uh, this is the lower tools that are most used, used tools. So the chisels I use the most are gonna go here and I will hang chisels I don't use as much higher. And again, this could be moved around anytime I want. So if I don't like it a month or two from now, I just rearrange it and change it up. And I had to use a step stool to get up here. Now, this cabinet is kind of high in the air, uh, but it's the way the electric was running in the shop. You see it's right under the cabinet. That's where I had to hang it. So I'm probably gonna have to build a shop stool to reach the stuff that's higher up in the cabinet. And here we are hanging one of the dovetail saws. Just made a piece to fit around the handle and then a little slide to lock into place. And again, we hung the second one. Here I'm hanging some rules and this is just basically a piece of wood with some magnets in it and the magnets will hold the, the rules in place. And we fashioned a holder for the spoke shaves. I still have cabinet, uh, card scrapers, I mean, cabinet scrapers to hang, hammers to hang. So here we are. With the squares is basically just a block with a slot cut in it for the square to slide in and out of. Starting from left to right, we have our chisels and the store and the saws. Now, the chisels that I don't use that often are higher, higher up, and the ones I do are lower. We've got some rules there. So moving into plain till. We have the block plays there. In the little cubbies there, I have the uh, brass planes. Got my router plane. Shoulder planes are in there. Spoke shaves. You can see there's plenty of room. I have more stuff to hang. I'm not going to show it here. I will fill it as time goes by, as I find time. Get more for this door. More for up here. I'm come down here. To this door, and we have our squares, miscellaneous chisels and screwdrivers, and again, plenty of room to add. As I figure out how I want to put things, I will add them in. We have three drawers for storing some smaller parts, small tools. The material I chose for the carcass is a butternut, which is also known as white walnut. Got the same type of uh, look as walnut, just a little bit lighter. Now, 
my lumber supplier had plenty of it and it was fairly inexpensive, that's why I went with it. Now, I did some reading and I found that carvers love this stuff and now I know why, because this stuff is extremely soft, very easy to work, so if you're ever gonna make any kind of cabinetry with it, you just gotta be careful and plan ahead. The door panel and the back panel are plywood. What I did is I veneered a piece of white ash, straight grain, vertical grain, to the inside. And I did that for the natural lighting effect of it. You open it up, it just makes it seem brighter inside. And on the outside of the doors, to give it a contrasting look, I went with a rosewood veneer. Not the cheapest stuff in the world, but uh, it was paper backed, so I was able to use contact cement to put it down. Bolt pieces were paper backed. And the inside construction is also made with the butternut. Uh, the drawers are a piece of maple I had. One, one continuous piece on the fronts, and then you got pine uh, backs and sides. And that's all dialed together. All in all, I like the color choices. I think they go well together. I think I'll get lots of use out of this cabinet. And in time, I will add more tools to it and fill it up.